back from Derry. Looks like you're making them work for it. <laughs> so guys, let's talk a bit about Rainbow Reef. Rainbow Reef is our most biodiverse tank in the entire building. That means that there are more species of fish in this tank alone than anywhere else at Ripley's Aquarium. There are about 100 different species in this tank alone. Does anyone want to guess how many fish are in this tank total? Raise your hand. How many, how many fish are in here? Yes. 200. 200. Anyone else want to guess? Yes. 3,000. One more guess. 562. 562. <laughs> there is actually a whopping 1,000 fish in this tank. Does anyone see a fish they recognize in this tank? Dory! Dory! That's right, I hear Dorian. Yes, Dory is in this tank and she is right here. This beautiful blue uh, fish with the yellow tail. It looks like Dory. Yeah, that is Dory. So guys, Dory's real name is a pallet surgeon fish. The correct name is pallet surgeon fish. And here's why. On Dory's back, you guys probably noticed a black mark. A black mark, which looks like an artist's palette. Has anyone seen like uh, artists or more specifically actually Bob Ross? Has anyone seen Bob Ross yeah. taking a picture? Yes. Happy tree. Yeah. There you go. Happy tree. Oh, well, have, you ever, have you noticed what he was holding in his hands when he was painting? That's called an artist's palette. That's where artists put the paint on to help them uh, with their pictures, guys. And that's where Joy gets her name, the, uh, the uh, palette surgeon fish. Now, her, the other part of her name, surgeon fish, actually has, has a meaning as well. So the real Dory that we all know and love isn't uh, the bubbly, forgetful, friendly fish. She's not actually a bubbly, friendly, forgetful fish. Uh, the real Dory actually hides kind of a dark secret. So, the reason she's called a surgeon fish is because at the base of her tail, on both sides, Dory actually has razor sharp blades. Razor sharp blades that are said to be as sharp as a surgeon scalpel. Hence the name. Now, Dory uses these blades to defend herself against predators. Uh, Prep, yes. have you or any of the divers ever been uh, scratched or stung by Dory or any of the other surgeon fish in this tank? Oh, I personally have not, but a lot of other divers, we do get cut up by Dory from time to time. Is, uh, do, does she mean to do that? She doesn't mean to do that, but by accident, she, they only use it to serve defense. So for self-defense. Okay, so guys, if a larger fish tries to eat Dory, she'll just cut them. She'll cut you, man. So if you guys ever see Dory or any other surgeon fish in the wild or in the coral reefs, just admire them from a distance, give them their space, because they might get upset, they might scratch you, and they will remember it. Trust me. Now guys, uh, where's Pratt? Pratt! Right here. Uh, why don't you tell me what's your favorite fish in this whole tank? Alright, my favorite fish, I am still a bit confused if it's a yellow fish with black stripes, or if it's actually a black fish with yellow stripes. But, the thing I like most about it is it's saying, it's called a stripey, right over here. Stripey. Is it a stripey? Do you guys no. think it's uh, black with yellow stripes or yellow with black stripes? I don't know, I'm still confused. Raise your hand if you think it's yellow with black stripes. <laughs> okay. Raise your hand if you think it's black with white with yellow stripes. Okay, well, I personally don't know, but I think they're cool anyway. They're called stripies. Now, guys, I have a favorite fish in this tank as well. Let me see if I can find him. Ah, there he is. You guys see the fish with the horn on its head? Unicorn fish! Uh, say that again? Unicorn fish! Say that loud and clear. Unicorn fish! That is correct. This is called the unicorn fish. Good job. Now, guys, raise your hand if you want to guess what they use that horn for. What do they use the horn for? Raise your hands. Yes. Defending. Defending? Okay, anyone else want to guess? Yes? Magic. Magic. Good answer. And one more guess. Anyone else want to guess? What do they use that horn for? Catching food. Catching food. Alright. Well, guys, the truth is, we have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows why unicorn fish have that weird horn on their heads. Many different species have them, and both males and females have them. But no one has ever seen them use it. No one has any idea. Now, we do think it may have something to do with species recognition. Because there are multiple different species of unicorn fish. Some of them have big horns, some of them have small horns, some of them don't have horns at all. In fact, why not? See the one, uh, see this one here with the bump on its head, uh, it has a big nose? That is a unicorn fish. As you can see, it barely has a horn at all. So we think it may have something to do with 
recognizing different species and not recognizing their own species, but we just don't know. We'll just have to uh, keep guessing, I guess. Now guys, another fish you probably noticed are these big silvery fish right here. These big silvery disc ones. They look very like flat. They look very flat. And I'll give you a hint what they're called, guys. I'll give you a hint what they're called. Na 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 Thank God people still get that joke. <laughs> so yes, these are actually called bat fish. Bat fish. Now I heard a rumor saying that the divers have a bit of a rocky relationship with these fish. I can't imagine why. Uh, Pat, yeah. what's the deal with the divers and the bat fish? Yeah, so we have a love-hate relationship with them. We love them because they're the cool, but we actually do not like them that much because from time to time they keep us, they keep us giving some free haircuts in here. Are you saying you are you saying you used to have more hair before you started working here? I used to have a lot of hair before I got into that for sure. For sure. Yeah. I heard I heard the divers call these fish the mean girls of the tank. <laughs> now guys, you probably noticed something else in this tank other than just fish. Anyone want to point that out? Raise your hand, what else is in this tank other than just fish? Yes. That's what Okay, one more guess. What else is in this tank, guys? What, it's not just fish. What else is in here? Water. Sorry? Coral oh, reefs. Yeah, fish, okay, not that. Okay, well, there's actually coral in this tank, guys. Coral reefs. That's probably just the big, beautiful structures of coral. This is where the fish live. That's where they live in the wild. Now, guys, raise your hand if you think coral is a plant. Raise your hand if you think coral is an animal. Okay? Raise your hand if you think coral is just a pretty looking rock. Okay, well, big surprise, guys. It's actually a mixture of all three of those things. So at the base of it all, coral is a tiny microscopic animal called a coral polyp. It kind of resembles a jellyfish, and it is microscopic. And these guys live in big colonies, and they build large structures, which gives the coral some shape, made of calcium carbonate. Do you guys know what calcium carbonate is? It's chalk. Oh, that's a bit of a What a press steal the show like that. So guys, uh, the structure of a reef is made of calcium carbonate, which is the same material as chalk. Now the, now the coral polyps share a symbiotic relationship with algae. They grow algae in their bodies, which they use for food, and it also gives the coral its color. Different uh, types of coral have different types of algae, hence the different colorations. Now guys, raise your hand if you think the coral in this tank is real. Alright? Raise your hand if you think the coral is fake. Alright. Well, truth is guys, the coral in this tank is actually fake. Yeah. Fake coral. Imposter. <laughs> Imposter, yeah. Well, there is a good reason for this though. Coral is extremely hard to maintain. It is very delicate, it's very fragile, so it t it's very hard to keep alive. And on top of that, it takes a very long time to grow. How long do you think it would take for the coral to get this big girl's real? Raise your hand. Yes. 200 days. 200 days. Anyone else want to guess? Yes. A million years. One more guess. Yes. Oh, how many years? You two years? Yeah, pretty, that's a pretty good guess, actually. Okay, so if the coral this tank was real, it would take around 500 years to get this big. 500 years. Coral, coral grows extremely slowly, and we've only been on it for five years, so ain't nobody got time for that. Now guys, coral is actually facing a lot of trouble in this day and age, mostly due to our actions. Uh, Pratt! Pratt! Yes. What kind of trouble is coral facing in this day and age? So the biggest threat the corals are facing in the ocean is something called coral bleaching. Or bleaching. Now when the water temperature in the ocean goes up by one or two degrees, the coral starts to expect all the algae, the zoo algae, that gives them all the color and food. With the zoo algae gone, the corals are turning white and they are slowly starting to spread. This is called coral bleaching. So coral bleaching, guys. You guys know the Great Barrier Reef, where Dorian and Nemo are from? More than half of that has been lost to coral bleaching. In fact, more than half of corals around the world have been lost to coral bleaching, which is very unfortunate. But luckily, there are things that we can do in our daily lives to help prevent the spread of global warming and to prevent the, the warming of our oceans and to make sure that coral is still around in the future, guys. We can reduce reef recycle, we can take public transit every once in a while, we can make more sustainable options when it comes to fishing and seafood. All these little details, all these little uh, decisions, decisions that we make in our daily lives can make the biggest impact because they can ensure that coral reefs and the creatures that live in the coral reefs are still around.
around for our grandkids to enjoy. I know I want my grandkids to enjoy coral reefs when they're younger, when they're ill. Thank you, guys. So anyway, that was our 715 Rainbow Reef Dive Show, guys. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Uh, let's give a big round of applause for Pratt. If you guys have any questions, don't be afraid to come ask. My name is Sark, and have a wonderful day, guys.